Swadika, hello and welcome. You're watching ASEAN Challenge, the show to give you the latest headlines, hot topics and updates happening around your ASEAN community in two languages, Thai and English. I'm Rosalind Tepawan. And I'm Alisa Asitiwong. Thank you very much for joining us on the ASEAN Challenge. We are going to talk about the ASEAN and the Thai language. And in our ASEAN around us, let's talk about some hot issues happening around your ASEAN bloc that continues to once again surface, just like in Laos, with the ongoing, you could say, issue surrounding landmines that still exist, millions and millions of landmines still existing in the Lao community where people are still using land to make a living. That's right. So it's said to be that, of course, people who are in their, let's say, teenage years, adults, and even children have been acquainted, let's say. To playing around with in the bomb areas. That's because bombs have been left by the U.S. Air Force since back in the days during the war, and in which, of course, there's still some bombs left which have not exploded. They've been let go from air forces, and they have not exploded, and they're still in the land of Laos. Right. When you take a look in hindsight, it's been 40 years since the Vietnam War, and still. A hundred million bombs still remain unmined and unexploded within the areas in Laos, in particular, in one community called Chiang Quang Province in Laos, where a lot of that area is still inhabited by many locals. And these landmines, these bombs, unexploded bombs, are able to be triggered at any moment's notice. The problem is. The local area, the residents there, even the funding is not enough to actually dig out all of those bombs. It's quite a long process. So still, locals have to live with the bomb, and it's an ongoing problem. That's right. So according to the numbers at the moment now, they say that approximately 80 percent of the population, or about 6.4 million people, have to live among these bombs that were dropped by war planes um, during the years of 1964 to 1973. More than 270 million cluster mut. Uh, munitions in Laos, or one third of which did not explode, according to the Lao National Regulatory Authority for UXO, NRA has said that. So of course, there's like several, so many bombs still out there, and they don't do not actually know how long it will take to clear up the whole land. Right, because the funding is insufficient. Also, the personnel, the local people, have been calling for more government assistance, even international assistance from various communities, like the United States, for example, who had actually been involved back in the day, 40 years ago, since 1990 or 73, between 1964 to 1973, CIA-run operations and secret operations tried to destroy North Vietnamese supply routes along the Ho Chi Minh Trail. In order to wipe out the communist allies, they kept dropping, as you mentioned, these cluster bombs, oftentimes a lot of which did not explode. So we're talking about around 100 million unexploded bombs left in these communities, a dumping ground for these bombs when their original target had been unavailable. And the planes themselves couldn't land with explosives, so they used this area as a dropping ground. Not just that, but a lot of these planes had even taken off from Thailand, for example, from Utapau Airport from Nakhon Ratchasima province. So, still, it's a problem. That's right. So as you have mentioned, of course, there's not enough funding to eliminate all the bombs around Laos itself. So international aid has been requested, of course, and the United States has come in to assist in terms of funding in order to help, in order to eliminate the bombs around the areas. Now we can see that we can say that uh, last year in 2016, the United States had begun giving aid to Laos in order to eliminate these bombs, with Barack Obama being the first U.S. president to visit Laos and to help funding back in 2016. So therefore, hopefully, there will be, you know, more funding and in which there will be less people will have to be affected because these U.S. bombs, even though they did not explode back in the days of 1964 to 1973, but they are still killing people in Laos, in which over 20,000 people have been killed or injured since the bombing had stopped. But however, 58% of those killed or injured were from the unexploded bombs. Um, and this was the statistics from 2013 to 2015. Right. And in which they say that 58% of these were under age 14 as well. And as you saw in the footage just a moment ago, a lot of people who accidentally stepped on these bombs had required lots of medical assistance as well. So 
what you see here is a lot of, um, you could say, initial, just kind of not exactly your cutting edge technology in scouting out those bombs and metal detectors. You see normal, regular metal detectors at work here. So locals are also calling for more cutting edge technology, requiring less personnel in order to snuff out these bombs as well. And not just that, after they snuff out the bombs with these metal detectors, they have to diffuse the bombs as well. And so it's a several, it's a multi-step procedure that is also very risky. So with the lack of technology, the lack of funding, the lack of personnel, Laos and the locals here are still a long way from getting rid of all of those unexploded bombs, which means the possibility of a lot more injuries and risks to come as well. That's right. At the moment now, there are no precise estimates on how much is actually left. And as you mentioned, it's a very complicated process. So funding is very important as a lot of the people who are farmers or are in agriculture, they have to they have to work on a daily basis in this area in which, of course, is covered with bombs that have been dropped. Right. So some important thoughts to come in and assist each other in our ASEAN community. ค่ะมาดูกันในส่วนของอาเซียนอราวน์ดัสค่ะมาดูจากประเทศลาวนั่นเองค่ะซึ่งถ้าหากพูดถึงประเทศลาวนั้นณปัจจุบันเนี่
a lot of people had discovered what compounded fears even more, an Islamic State flag, a black one, painted on one of the walls. Also a book with a photograph of the Islamic State leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, was shown by police and the media. So a lot of these helped perpetuated fears and stoked more fears among the biggest Muslim population in the world. That's Indonesia. right. And mm. there are fears, of course, across Southeast Asia that as Islamic State loses ground in the Middle East, it will seek footholds elsewhere. Indonesian authorities have tightened security for the weekend that occurred afterwards and, of course, at the end of Ramadan, which recently occurred as well. A lot of security has been tightened in several areas where Muslim populations are quite dominant. Right, especially after an important time among the Muslim community that's the Ramadan period and the Eid al Fitr period as well, where people give a lot of importance to coming out from Ramadan and celebrating. But altogether, sporadic attacks within Indonesia and around have been happening among Islamic State sympathizers, carrying out mostly low-level attacks over the past few years that steam, seem to be ongoing still. That's right. Taking a look at what President Joko Widodo has urged, he has urged Parliament to accelerate plans in order to tighten anti-terrorism laws in order to meet with new and potential dangers, including giving police powers to detain suspects without trial for longer and to arrest people for hate speech or for spreading radical content and joining proscribed groups. Right, a double-edged sword, you could say. While it does give more mandate to police officers, more security and more safety for the public, at the same time, it could also result in a lot of suspicions among the public and lack of freedom as well. So while Indonesia continues to tighten security, we'll have to continue to see how, much, how effective that will be in cracking down on Islamic militancy. ใช่แล้วค่ะมาดูกันในส่วนข่าวแรกในอาเซียนอาราวด์เอสขอภัยค่ะอาเซียนฮอตอิชชูค่ะซึ่งมาที่ประเทศอินโดนีเซียนะค
Malrawi, where government forces are battling to recapture areas held by Islamic State-linked militants for more than five weeks already. Right. So with that said, with the tightening security and also the containment of militant activity and the crackdown within respective countries, this meeting will also discuss various issues of possible spillovers of militancy to other countries as well, flushing out militancy in various areas that could result in more widespread terror sporadically elsewhere. But altogether, this, uh, according to many, is just the start of more talks to come on how to combat militancy. ใช่แล้วค่ะมาดูในส่วนข่าวที่2ค่ะซึ่ง3ชาติในอาเซียนนะคะก็ถือว่าเป็น3ชาติที่มีประชากรมุสลิมเยอะพอสมควรนะคะก็ได้ร่วมมือประชุมกันนะคะทางฟิลิปปินส์อินโดนีเซียและมาเลเซียค่ะก็ได้ร่วมประชุมกันค่ะเพื่อแบ่งปันข้อมูลสกัดก่อการร้ายแล้วก็แลกเปลี่ยนข้อมูลด้านความมั่นคงค่ะก็มีรัฐมนตรีต่างประเทศและรัฐมนตรีกลาโหมของทางฟิลิปปินส์มาเลเซียอินโดนีเซียก็ได้ประชุมกันที่กรุงมะนิลานั่นเองนะคะเพื่อยกระดับความปลอดภัยในด้านของความมั่นคงด้าน IS ค่ะใช่ค่ะทุกประเทศก็มีเหตุการณ์ก่อการร้ายเกิดขึ้นต่อเนื่องนะคะในช่วงหลายปีที่ผ่านมาเนี่ยเพราะฉะนั้นหลายประเทศจะจับมือกันเพื่อที่จะหาทางออกที่ดีที่จัดการแล้วก็ควบคุมเรื่องการก่อการร้ายนะคะไม่ให้ spread หรือว่า spill ไปประเทศอื่นพร้อมกันค่ะ Alright, so moving on to more Muslim-related news updates, but some lighter news now mm. in terms of their ending of Ramadan, which just occurred. The Eid al fitr in which is a big celebration to yes. end Ramadan in several Muslim-based countries. So in Indonesia itself, in the past week, of course, they also celebrated in order to uh, mark the ending of Ramadan, and in which Muslims had queued up to exchange cash for new notes and did their shop. In order to prepare for this festive event, um, and as well as there were big crowds and celebrations going on as well. Right, you can see a lot of lively activities, a lot of energy out there as people hit the streets, hit the markets, the shopping malls, and really just catch up on all that shopping and eating after fasting for quite some time. So big crowds are preparing a whole lot for. Shopping and for celebrating all together That's right. by going to the bank, withdrawing lots of notes, and this time there's a new note that came out as well. <laughs> wow! All right, so we can see that a lot of people in this footage here they're out shopping, and the markets and shopping malls were bustling with shoppers. Actually, nevertheless. Amid this celebration, of course, security measures were tightened due to the fact that there were recent um, attacks in these countries as well. Right. So a, a kind of a systematic celebration, you could say, a, 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 a controlled celebration <laughs> with all these uh, officers and dogs on the watch and watchdogs. But altogether, with uh, th what you see here, just people lining up to get those banknotes in mm. celebration. So still, despite the recent events of terrorism. And whatnot, people are still moral. They still got their morale That's intact. It. So ah. moving on to. ข่าวต่อไปค่ะของอินโดนีเซียนะคะก็ยังถือว่าเป็นข่าวจากประเทศอินโดนีเซียแต่ว่าเป็นข่าวที่เบาๆหน่อยนะคะอย่างที่หลายคนก็ทราบกันดีว่าเมื่อสัปดาห์ก่อนนะคะทางประเทศที่เป็นชาวมุสลิมนะคะก็ได้เฉลิมวันตรุษอีเดลฟิตรีนั่นเองค่ะซึ่งเป็นวันถือว่าวันสุดท้ายของสินอดหรือรอมฎานนั่นเองประเทศต่างๆอย่างเช่นอินโดนีเซียเนี่ยค่ะก็ได้เฉลิมฉลองประชาชนก็ได้ออกมาเพื่อมาซื้อของจับใจแล้วก็มาแลกเปลี่ยนโน้ตใหม่ด้วยนะคะธนบัตรใหม่ใช่ค่ะเป็นงานเฉลิมฉลองที่สําคัญมากๆสําหรับชาวมุสลิมทั่วโลกนะคะไม่ว่าจะเป็นประเทศอินโดนีเซียหรือว่าประเทศอื่นก็จะออกมาเฉลิมฉลองวันนี้แล้วก็หลังจากการอดมาตั้งนานนะคะช่วงรอมฎานใช่ค่ะเพราะฉะนั้นเมื่อกี้ก็ได้เห็นการเข้าแถวกันต่อคิวเพื่อที่จะซื้อธนบัตรพิเศษสําหรับงานอันนี้เป็นเฉพาะเลยค่ะใช่ค่ะ so moving on to another country in which has also celebrated the end of Ramadan as well Muslims in Philippines has celebrated the ending of Ramadan as well and in which they attended morning prayers at mosque and as well as celebrated in various areas in the city as well of course in this area of course there were lots of security measures and security was boosted as well in order to enforce um, the let's say the end of Ramadan in order to be very peaceful the government had issued an eight-hour humanitarian ceasefire against the militants between 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. during the um, during the June 25th in order to celebrate Eid al-Fitr or the end of Ramadan 
Yes, not just that. In addition to that, 300 officers, rather as security guards and soldiers, many people had safeguarded hundreds of Muslims, you could see, as they traveled to the mos mosques deemed a safe ground from militant activities, rebel activities in the area as well. People insist on their right to pray on this important day, Eid al-Fitr. So the government forces have definitely collaborated with the locals here in order to give them their right to come and pray. ใช่แล้วค่ะมาดูอีกหนึ่งประเทศค่ะที่ได้ฉลองวันสุดท้ายของรามดันนะคะวันอีเดลฟิตรีนั่นเองค่ะซึ่งทางฟิลิปปินส์นะคะก็ได้เฉลิมฉลองเช่นกันค่ะในเวลาเดียวกันทางกองทัพฟิลิปปินส์ก็ได้ประกาศหยุดยิงเป็นเวลา8ชั่วโมงเมื่อวันเสาร์ที่24มิถุนายนนะคะเพื่อที่จะเป็นการปฏิบัติการปราบปรามกลุ่มอิสลามติดอาวุธยึดเมืองมาราวีทางภาคใต้ค่ะพร้อมก็มีเจ้าหน้าที่ปกป้องความปลอดภัยนะคะให้กับชาวมุสลิมเช่นกันเพื่อที่จะมาที่ที่มอสแบบปลอดภัยค่ะก็อันนี้ก็เป็นการเฉลิมฉลองอีดอัลฟิเตอร์นั่นเองค่ะก็ถือว่าในปีนี้นะคะการเฉลิมฉลองไม่ว่าในประเทศไหนๆก็อาจจะต้องเข้มงวดด้านความปลอดภัยมากกว่าปีอื่นๆนะคะก็แต่ว่ายังไงก็ตามก็ถือว่าเป็นหนึ่งเทศกาลที่หลายๆคนก็ได้เฉลิมฉลองเป็นที่เรียบร้อยแล้วค่ะค่ะ indeed and some important dates there coming up as well in the next break on ASEAN Challenge we have ASEAN Calendar with many dates ahead stay tuned ใช่แล้วค่ะพักกันสักครู่ค่ะ Welcome back to the show. Up next in ASEAN calendar, lots of important holidays to mark your dates with. ใช่แล้วค่ะกลับเข้าสู่รายการ ASEAN Challenge ค่ะในช่วงนี้ไปดูกันว่ามีอีเวนต์อะไรกำลังเกิดขึ้นในอาเซียนกันบ้างค่ะจุน 20th World Refugee Day In a world where violence forces hundreds of families to flee each day, the UN Refugee Agency believes now is the time to show world leaders that the global public stands with refugees, and it will launch its hashtag with refugees petition on June 20th to send a message to governments that they must work together and do their fair share for refugees. The hashtag with refugees petition will be delivered to UN headquarters in New York ahead of the UN high-level meeting on refugees and migrants scheduled for the 19th of September. The petition asks governments to ensure every refugee child gets an education, ensure every refugee family has somewhere safe to live, ensure every refugee can work or learn new skills to make a positive contribution to their community. World Refugee Day has been marked on the 20th of June, ever since the UN General Assembly on the 4th of December 2000. Adopted Resolution 55/76, where it noted that 2001 marked the 50th anniversary of the 1951 Convention relating to the status of refugees, and that the Organization of African Unity or OAU had agreed to have International Refugee Day coincide with Africa Refugee Day on the 20th of June. June 26 to June 30th, Lebaran holiday. Hari Raya Idul Fitri or Lebaran is an Indonesian public holiday that allows Muslims to celebrate the end of Ramadan with their family members. Lebaran is one of the major national holidays in Indonesia. Lebaran holiday officially lasts for two days in the Indonesian calendar. Although the government usually declares a few days before and after the Lebaran as a bank holiday. Many individuals or families, especially Muslims, take paid time off from their workplaces during these days. Hari Raya Idul Fitri is characterized as a time of happiness. It is known as Lebron. Lebron is a public holiday that allows Indonesians to spend time with their friends and family members after many months of working. While Hari Raya Idul Fitri is celebrated by Muslims of various nationalities, 
Many of its traditions are unique to Indonesia. In Indonesia, Muslims practice the tradition of offering forgiveness to other people. Unlike many other Islamic practices, this practice does not come from the Quran. Instead, it comes from a fusion of Islamic and Javanese cultures in the 15th century CE. With regards to the scale of celebrations, Hari Raya Idul Fitri may be the largest Indonesian public holiday. Similar to how Christmas is celebrated in North America and Europe, Hari Raya Idul Fitri is not limited to a single day. Instead, many celebrations are combined over the course of many weeks for a season of festivities. June 26, Sunton Pool Day. June 26 of every year is celebrated in Thailand as Sunton Pool Day. Sunton Pool is Thailand's best known royal poet in the Ratanakosin era, in the reign of King Rama II. Every Thai student has to learn his poem at school. On Sunton Pool Day, students take part in writing competitions and listening to his poems. One of his poems, called Pra Apaimani Poem, was one of the poems taught at school. It is about two princes getting banned from their palace by their father. During their journey, one of the brothers, Praapaimani, is seduced by a beautiful woman who changes into a sea ogress. Later, he fell in love with a mermaid. They have a son named Sutsa Khan. The sea ogress becomes jealous and goes after them. His brother, Si Suwan, and a couple of warriors want to rescue him. If you go to Samet Island, you can see the statue of Praapaimani sitting by the mermaid near Sai Gao Beach and the statue of the sea ogress in front of the main pier. There are a few Thai films based on this popular legend, including The Adventure of Sutsa Khan and The Legend of Sutsa Khan. There is also a Thai comic series with the name Apaimani Sega. Sun Thon Poo left behind a legacy of poems that have become famous over time because of their description of Thai history. In 1986, the 200th anniversary of his birth, Sun Thon Poo was honored by UNESCO as a great world poet. A statue of Sun Thon Poo was erected in Glang District, Rayong Province, the birthplace of his father. Penang is proud of its designation as a World Heritage Site to the point that the state has made July 7th the day the designation was issued in 2008, Georgetown World Heritage Day. The day is designed to allow citizens and visitors to celebrate the culture, buildings, heritage and history of the site. History of the Holiday On July 7, 2008, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, designated World Heritage Status to Georgetown in Penang. The award placed a spotlight on Georgetown's cultural heritage, colonial influences and landscape. In recognition of the designation, the government of Penang declared July 7th as Georgetown World Heritage Day, making it a public holiday throughout the area. Traditions and Celebrations A community-centered festival is held every year in honor of the World Heritage Day. Each year, a theme is chosen for the festival and events are centered around the theme. For example, the 2016 theme was Mari Main or Let's Play, with events centered around sports and games of the past. Many of the activities are centered around historical and cultural events that define today's daily life in Penang. The festival lasts several days and includes traditional food, arts and crafts, cultural festivities and events that highlights both the history and the culture of Georgetown. Local communities play a key role in all celebrations, providing presenters, participants, performers and folklorists who work to keep the history and culture alive. 
visitors are given unlimited access to the living traditions not only of Georgetown, but surrounding communities as well. Some of the celebrations are dedicated to rare and endangered traditions in an effort to remind citizens and visitors of the importance of heritage. The 9th of July, Khao Pan Sa Day. Khao Pan Sa marks the first day of the Buddhist Lent, a time when some observant Buddhists fast from such things as meat, alcohol and tobacco. For the most part, only Theravada rather than Mahayana Buddhists observe Kalpansa, and even many Theravada practitioners choose not to fast. Yet another name for Kalpansa is the Rains Retreat because it occurs right at the beginning of the Thai rainy season, and because Buddhist monks take this opportunity to retreat inside of their temples for a three-month period of study and meditation. Of a rainy season retreat predates Buddhism, but it was followed by Buddha during his lifetime. This tradition of a rainy season retreat predates Buddhism, but it was followed by Buddha during his life, which encourages many to emulate him today. Asian ascetics originally began the practice to avoid crop damage, and Buddha added the reason of avoiding killing insects by accidentally stepping on them. There are many festivals held all over Thailand on Khao Pan Sa Day and during the Buddhist Lent. The tourists cannot hope to attend them all, but the tourists to Thailand on Khao Pan Sa Day will have many options as to which celebrations to attend. Candles are involved in practically all of them, but each town manages to do things in a unique way. There will be many memorable and photo-worthy moments. And those were our events on ASEAN Calendar. It's time for a short break now. When we come back, ASEAN Interview Ahead. Stay tuned. Talk in Sakroka. Welcome back to the program and on to ASEAN interview. Let's take a look at what interesting topic we have for you this week. Good afternoon and Sadika. This is your host Pema for today's show ASEAN Challenge. And for today we have a very special guest all the way from South Africa who are studying here in Rangsit University. They are here to share about their experience learning here in Thailand and they are going to uh, express their opinion about the country. So if may I take the honor of introducing the guests. Uh, we have uh, three of them, uh, uh, Francie, Angelina and Marzuk. Could you please uh, introduce your, kindly introduce yourself, where you are from, and how long have you been here, and what program you are taking? Oh, thank you so much for uh, inviting me to this program. My name is Francesca Magepe, but you can just call me Francie. That's F-R-A-N-C-Y. I'm coming from Lesotho. Les my country is a very small country inside South Africa. Uh -huh. That's where I'm coming from. And I came here uh, 2015. Uh -huh. So I have like uh, two years now. Okay. So Thank you me. have been here for two years. Yeah, yeah. And uh, would you please introduce yourself? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Sabadika. Thank you again for inviting me in this uh -huh. program. Thank you for coming. Yeah. My name is Angelina Buana. I'm from Tanzania. Okay. And I'm here uh, since last year in August, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm taking Master of Art in Diplomacy and International Study. I'm expecting to finish my study next year. Uh -huh, okay. uh, thank you very much. Okay, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you again for your invitation. <laughs> this is Marzok uh, from Tanzania. I'm here for study Master in Art, uh, Diplomacy and International Studies. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be here for two years, and we are in pipeline for kind of for completion of one year thank you very much okay You're welcome to the show and uh, uh, so it's uh, uh, all of you have been here for almost two years Francie and one and a half year uh, uh, Angelina and Marzuk so uh, uh, during your stay here in Thailand how do you define your stay out here in in a country so away from your homeland and also why did you choose Thailand for your study 
Oh, thank you, Pema, for that question. Uh, I came here in Thailand. Uh, actually, there was a, an offer of uh -huh. scholarship. Uh -huh. That's how I, I got to come here in Thailand. Okay. But then my life here in Thailand, uh, I, I must admit I'm enjoying every minute of it because I get to interact with uh, lots of Thais, different uh -huh. uh, uh, nations, some of them from uh, neighboring countries like Nyema, Laos. So I'm really enjoying my stay here. Okay, good to hear that. And um, this week, as you all know, it has been a week of Songkran. So how did you all participate in the Songkran festival? Like, how did you all enjoy? How, how was your experience in, uh, in the festival that everyone's, uh, it's a quite <coughs> happening festival here in Thailand? If you could share. Mm. Thank you for the question. Actually, the Songkran went so well. We enjoyed a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was my first experience to okay. to participate in songkran uh -huh. so we just play a lot of water and uh it was fun actually we uh -huh. did it with my classmates uh -huh. and at last we have our dinner uh -huh. for songkran okay. uh, we just invited our professors and wow. we did it at landmark hotel in bangkok oh. so it was quite so funny and uh very enjoyable to my part. I okay, can say it is okay. uh, really appreciate for that. Okay, okay. So glad to hear you are having a good experience in Thailand. And um, uh, how do you um, stay here in Thailand for almost? Uh, everyone has stayed here in Thailand more than a year. Year. So for you, it's two years. So I want to, um, if you could please uh, kindly uh, explain what are the experiencing learning you are learning from Thailand that is different from your country. Yeah, thank you very much for your question, my sister Pima. First of all, we're supposed to be here for study. And uh, actually, we miss our relative, we miss our family, we miss mm -hmm. our friendly. But uh, we're supposed to know that we are here for study. Uh -huh. And uh, we experience so many things, okay. especially in terms of academic. Mm -hmm. uh, because we are here to study about a uh, diplomat. Mm -hmm. And uh, others, like me, I'm from Minister of Foreign Affairs. Okay. So when I was searching where to get uh, good knowledge, uh, which is familiar according to my career, mm -hmm. uh, I started to, to, to come here. Thailand because of of, uh, of uh, good historical background mm -hmm. of uh, diplomat. Uh, Thailand has a good performance in terms of governance, in terms of uh, administrations. So we learn a lot from our agents. We learn a lot from our professors. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, okay. Um, uh, as uh, so uh, as you mentioned. Uh, Thailand is Thailand has been like strong uh, historically very strong in in terms of diplomacy and in terms of diplomats record so and also Thailand is well known for the one vision one community ASEAN group so as an international observer how do you uh, find uh, in your eyes uh, this uh, community like ASEAN community as one uh, as a community that comes together as one vision and one community so how do you feel uh, this is uh, uh, in your eyes as an international observer something to learn from there how do you like uh, see this community uh, to me to me I'll, I'll talk about Thailand and mm -hmm. uh, to me Thailand I think Thailand could be what could be an Asian hub mm -hmm. for, for 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 this region oh. because really it has got lot of uh, what lot like, like tourism mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it could be a great uh, ASEAN hope. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, uh, Thailand is also the country that uh, uh, that gave birth to the whole idea of ASEAN community. So uh, good to know your comment. And now, uh, if I f go with another question, so I um, read something about that question. Okay, sure, okay. sure. When we talk about uh, the ASEAN countries, maybe in our eyes to say maybe is a one. Mm -hmm. But for me, I can say that it's one, but not one. Especially when you talk about uh, international policy, or, or no, inter, inter, international politics. Okay. Okay, is it quite different? When you, when you look about uh, maybe uh, North Korea, mm -hmm. okay? North Korea, uh, 
they base about the military mm-hmm. but uh, when you talk about uh, china china they base about uh, business they consider about uh, how how mm-hmm. how can they prove about the uh, uh, business about finance mm-hmm. something about that but uh, when you talk about talent talent is a uh, very good for culture yeah. because everybody talk about uh, the thai food everybody mm-hmm. talk about uh, the 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 thai box is a uh, very popular okay. so you can see is a one but not one every country has something very 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 uh how can i say unique unique, unique. okay very very unique when you when you when you talk about the the north america everybody know around the world mm-hmm. north america always they mm-hmm. think about the 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 military power okay so something like this thank you very much okay speaking about the thai culture and thai food have you all tried any of the thai food i'm pretty sure you guys might have tried thai food how do you find it is it same like your country or is it like different do you enjoy <laughs> uh 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 i'm enjoying thai food mm-hmm. and uh, once uh, when i came here i was uh, once got an invite to 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 attend uh a show on on, on Thai food mm-hmm. yeah and then i tried quite a lot of dishes there mm-hmm. uh one of those that i, I do remember quite well is this uh the salad uh, is so spicy oh, and pap- uh-huh. tom yum kum something like that yeah, okay yeah. okay so yeah 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 uh the the food here is quite different from my 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 home country mm-hmm because uh i find this uh the food here rather spicy too okay. hot but okay. yeah we do have a uh, spicy food back home but not that much but uh, i'm enjoying the food Thank okay you. good to know adding some points on my sister's side i can say i really enjoy thai food but uh-huh. not much since i'm not taking spicy okay, okay but i can say i'm enjoying much on fruits Oh, yeah, that's yeah. nice. Because that's there are nice. so many fruits uh, yeah. compared to my country. Okay, yeah. so that's nice. Also, myself, I want to add something about uh, the the Thai culture, especially for food. Uh, this is my first time to drink uh, uh, cold uh, cold coffee. The, the is it, it is my first time okay. to drink cold coffee, to drink cold tea. Okay. <laughs> so for the first day how 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 these people they drink cold uh-huh. coffee how these people they so drink coffee it was quite difficult yes, for you to uh, culturally I, shocked b- because yeah. always i know that uh, when you want to drink coffee you're supposed to be hot mm-hmm. yeah? when i want to drink uh, tea mm-hmm. tea is supposed to be hot mm-hmm. but in thai is quite different <laughs> people okay. they they eat uh, coffee and include the coffee there is ice yeah. this is my first time so i enjoy a lot okay okay good to know it's because of the climatic condition like it's quite ho- hot out here in thailand so you guys are like experiencing new uh, food new culture so good to know you people are really enjoying here out here in thailand yeah, yeah. but, and but also in terms of hot even tanzania also it's too hot like mm-hmm. th- like uh, like uh, like uh, thailand okay yes. okay yeah. so like in terms of weather you didn't have problem in adjusting in thailand yeah, yeah. good to kn- good to hear about your experiences and Uh, good to hear about how you all are coping up here in Thailand and um, now if I go on with my another question uh, how do you find um, Thailand is one of the easy uh, it's in Asia and South Africa is quite far away so how do you find the difference in the culture like are there any um, relevant cultural difference oh Uh, yeah 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 um, i must say there are a lot of differences but uh, uh here and there there are some similarities mm-hmm. like uh, uh when we we were we were mourning for the late king my condolences to, to the ties uh the way that uh, the the whole nation was was in mourning to some kind uh, to some extent reminded me of my the way we we mourn for for great people like mm-hmm. the, like the late king okay. so yeah 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 mm-hmm. Okay. Um anything yes. to add on? Okay. I want to add something also about the the the, the different and the similarity about the Thai. Mm-hmm. Uh I'm agree with my sister here. Something is similar, but something is a, is a, is a, is a very different. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh once I have been here in Thailand, I never uh, I s- I find a temple. 
in Tanzania is very difficult to find a temple. Okay. But here <laughs> also I know what is temple and I go to temple something like this. It's a very different. Okay. So okay, um anything okay thank you so much for coming to today's show and uh, good to know that all the way you have traveled from south africa to thailand and then good to hear that you all are having a good experience out here and hopefully you all will like apply what you learned here back in your country so i hope you will have a good stay out here in thailand and uh, wish you all the best for your future endeavor and if there's anything that you guys want to uh want to uh, suggest or say to the prospective students and people planning to visit Thailand if there's anything you guys want to express maybe I'll give one last uh, chance of say to express that ah uh, I, I, I would highly uh, recommend Thailand for anyone who wants to, to, to study because uh, the people here are very friendly warm welcoming the the, the weather is though is very hot you will struggle at first, but then you'll just adjust yes. and then adopt into the culture. Yeah, so Thailand is a place to, to study. Um, okay. Uh, on winding on, a, on winding on the point, maybe I can add something. Mm -hmm. uh, since uh, Thailand has become the hub for tourists, mm -hmm. especially from Western parts, mm -hmm. I think for them learning English, it will be the better things for them. So okay. I just advise the government of Thailand uh -huh. to just make a, put and more effort on that yes. since it okay. is like a, a hub for tourists especially in Asian countries Asian so okay. learning English pro, pro, promoting English language mm -hmm. in their culture and their schools it will be helping them for okay thank you thank you very much myself I appreciate the Thai and uh, I will I will suggest my friends to come here to study because everything is good in terms of life in terms of food everything is good for myself thank okay. you very much Okay, so uh, that was the students from South Africa who are studying here in Thailand, and then this is the um, this is the end of the ASEAN challenge for today. But meet you next week with some more guests with uh, more interesting things to share on on Thailand and their experience. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you. And that wraps up ASEAN Challenge for this week. We'll see you next week. And as for now, สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ